We have some fast solar wind, some mini solar storms, and a whole lot of flaring going on. The stories and more in the news this week. If you want to learn how weather from our star causes impacts at the Earth that shape the future of our world, join professors Dr. Jenny Meehan, Michael Cook, and myself as we guide you through a space weather certificate program like no other. To enroll in the space weather and environment science program offered at Millersville University, go to millersville edu slash swen. It's weather for the 21st century. This forecast also sponsored in part by CW Ops. Our sun is letting us know what solar maximum is all about. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, look at all the active regions in Earth view. There are no less than 18 active regions on the Earth-facing disk, and that means a lot of solar flares. In fact, the ones that have been leading the fray have been this kind of cluster of solar active regions right here. These have been giving us mainly R1 to near R2 level radio blackouts, but along with region 3636, 3639, 3646, and now region 3654 jumping into the fray, we have been getting not only a lot of solar flares, but also little mini solar storms being launched. Luckily, most of the solar flares have been short-lived and impulsive. They're not the big long duration flares, so they're more of a nuisance, but they sure are causing a lot of noise on the bands. Now, on top of that, you can see we have this big coronal hole. This is gonna be rotating into the Earth strike zone here over the next couple days, and it's gonna be sending us some fast solar wind, but you can actually see a bit more activity right here. If you take a look at this filament, you can barely see this filament right here. Well, early on the 23rd, this launches right there in that big puff. You also saw another eruption there and there was some stuff going off here in the north. This launched as kind of a cluster of solar storms. Though This region, it looks like some of this stuff is actually gonna go south of Earth, but we might have a slightly Earth-directed component. It's kind of hard to tell from the coronagraphs because there really wasn't that much of a halo. But we are gonna be expecting an enhancement with the fast solar wind. We're gonna be getting this from this uh, uh, set of coronal holes here over the next couple days. So war photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you can expect to start seeing a show around the 26th and it could last possibly through the 28th. And now taking a look at the sun's far side, we can no longer use stereo A imagery to look at the sun's far side because stereo A is looking at the same side of the sun as we are. So we have to simulate the far side by looking at HMI and AIA imagery of about two weeks ago to get an idea of what active regions might be lurking on the sun's far side. And as you can see, region 3628 and 3633, these were the regions that gave us a little bit of activity the last time they were in Earth view, and they look like they might be surviving their far side passage. In fact, as we take a look at our JSOC HMI helioseismology far sided monitor, look at all of the dark regions. These are all the regions that are actually rotated into Earth view right now. They're on the front side. But as this yellow patch, which is the sun's far side, rotates uh, further around, you can see things are pretty calm in actuality. It looks like region 3630, 3628, and then you'll see region 3633 also looking like it's surviving their far side passage but we might have a, a few other small regions that are uh, coming, you know, that are emerging, but it doesn't look like there's any really heavy dark spots on the sun's far side. So overall, that means that we're gonna have some reasonable calm on this far side at, over the next week. And as regions rotate into Earth view, it doesn't look like we're gonna have any big flare players. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, enjoy the fact that you're going to get a bit of a reprieve. The noise on the band should go down. The radio blackout should calm down as well. And enjoy because we do need a little bit of a break. Now, switching to our moon, we are passing through the full moon phase on our way to the third quarter. And by the 30th, the moon will still be about 60% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you wanna catch those dim objects in the sky, like, I don't know, maybe some aurora, you're gonna have this bright companion. So you're gonna to need to check your local rise and set times. Now, switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the 
fast solar wind from that coronal hole that's going to be rotating in through the Earth's strike zone, along with the potential for some small mini solar storms. So at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting major storm conditions. In fact, NOAA is giving us about a 60% chance of major storm uh, starting around the 25th. This should calm down maybe just a little bit as we pass through some fast solar wind around the 26th. But then on the 27th and the 28th, we could get that filament eruption that's mainly going to go south of Earth, but it could give us a little bit of a glancing blow uh, right around the 27th. So Aurora photographers, man, you really do have some decent chances to get some uh, sporadic Aurora views over the latter part of this week and early into next week. So be, be sure to keep your batteries charged. Now, as we take a look at mid-latitudes, well, we are expecting active conditions for the same reasons. We're going to have that wind watch sitting right around the 25th, but we do have about a 20% chance of a minor storm, and that will then calm down just a little bit as we move through the 26th. But once again, because of that filament eruption, we're expecting to see maybe a little bit of an enhancement starting around the 27th or into the 28th. So Aurora photographers, if you're at mid-latitudes, you could get just a little bit of a show, but it's going to be very fleeting. So yeah, only if you're dedicated should you chase. Now, switching to your solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week, we do have a lot of active regions in Earth view, and quite a few of them are big flare players. So we expect to have a lot of noise on the bands this week, but things will be quieting down. The solar flux will also be dropping. As you can see, we're over in the 200s right now, but that could be dropping down to about 175 or so by about mid next week. So expect a a lot of radio blackouts at R1 to R2 level. In fact, NOAA is giving us about a 75% chance of uh, R1 to R2 level radio blackouts over the next three days, with about even a 20% chance of uh, X-class flares at R3 level radio blackout. But those chances are diminishing. In fact, as we get to mid next week, things should be getting pretty quiet. We will still have a chance for the radio blackouts, but they won't be nearly as bad. And that will continue to calm down as we move through next next week as well. Now, switching to our radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over the coming week, everything is in the green right now when it comes to radiation storms, except for the radiation storm risk. We are sitting at the D1 normal range. That's at flight level 360 for you aviators. It's also the S0 quiet range for everyone else. But right now, NOAA is giving us about a 20% chance of an S1 to S2 radiation storm. And that's because we have a lot of those big flare players rotating to the sun's uh, west limb. And that's when that risk for radiation storms always seems to rise. And we will continue to have this risk over the next three days. Then you'll start seeing things begin to calm down as that big cluster of regions rotates to the sun's far side. But we won't be completely in the clear. That's probably not going to happen until at least midweek, if not the latter part of next week. So you, all you aviators and flight crew, just stay on your toes. We don't have any issues right now, but make sure you check those ICAO advisories often. So the space weather this week is definitely showing us some solar maximum potential. We do have a coronal hole that's going to be rotating in through the Earth strike zone here over the next couple days. And along with a couple mini solar storms and a filament launch, we could get some decent aurora, especially at high latitudes. So you aurora photographers, be sure to keep your batteries charged if you're at high latitudes. And if you are at mid latitudes, well, you could get a little bit of something, but only if you're dedicated should you chase. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, I know you've been dealing with these radio blackouts almost nonstop, but luckily they're just short-lived. They're intermittent little things, and they're probably going to be calming down here over the next couple days and definitely calming down in through next week. So just hang in there and things will get better on the dayside radio bands. And now for you GPS users, well, you know, we do have that solar storm, the fast solar wind and some possibility for Aurora over the rest of this week. So you could be having some issues, especially if you're on the night side anywhere near Aurora. Plus, we also have those radio blackouts that could be giving us a little bit of GPS reception issues on Earth's day side as well. So just kind of hang in there for the next few days. Stay vigilant, especially near dawn or near dusk or anywhere near Aurora. And if you're a UAV flyer, be sure to calibrate your magnetometers often when that fast solar wind hits. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman.
Thank you for watching.